In this video, I'm going to go over a few special cases that we are going to come across when factoring. And one of these special cases is known as the difference of squares. So let's take a second to look at the following expression. a plus b times a minus b. Now if we expand this out in the same way that we learned how to expand, we're going to do a times a, which is equal to a squared, a times negative b, which is negative ab, b times a, which is positive ab, and b times negative b, which is going to be equal to negative b squared. Now we can simplify this as a squared. We have a minus ab here and a plus ab here, so these are going to cancel each other out, and we're left with minus b squared. And what we have here is a very special case known as the difference of two squares. We have two perfect squares because we have a times a and b times b, and we're taking the difference between these two squares. What we can recognize is that if we come across an expression in which, let's say we have x squared minus 4, and we're asked to factor this expression, we can recognize that we have a difference of two squares. x squared is a perfect square because x times x is x squared, and 4 is a perfect square because 2 times 2 is equal to 4. So we can recognize immediately that here we have a difference of two squares. And we know that we can factor this by simply taking the square root of this term, and the square root of x squared is x, so we know that we're going to have an x here. And we know from here that when we had a difference of two squares, we could easily factor that by basically taking the square root of each of our terms and in one bracket adding them together and in the other bracket subtracting them. So we're going to have a minus sign here and a plus sign in here. Now we just need to take the square root of our second term, and the square root of 4 is equal to 2, so we can put our 2 in here. So we can easily factor a difference of two squares by taking the square root of each of the terms and first adding them, and then sub I mean subtracting them, and then adding them, or whichever order you're doing it in. Just two brackets, one of them is going to have a minus sign, one of them is going to have a plus sign, and that is going to be a very simple way that we can factor these types of expressions. And we can expand this out just to validate that we've done things correctly. x times x is x squared, x times 2x is plus 2x, minus 2 times x is minus 2x, and minus 2 times plus 2 is minus 4. And these are going to cancel each other out, and we're left with x squared minus 4, exactly what we started off with. And this is actually why it's going to be important that we have one minus sign and one plus sign, because that means that our middle two terms are just going to cancel each other out, and we're going to be left with an end result that is a negative, because we have a minus times a plus, and we have 2 times 2, which is just going to be 4. So that is why this formula is going to make sense. Let's go over one more example of a difference of two squares. Let's say we have 45x squared minus 125. Now when you look at this, you might recognize that these by themselves are not perfect squares. 45 is not a perfect square and neither is 125. But what you might see is that each of these terms has a common factor, and that common factor is 5. So if we factor out 5, 45 divided by 5 is 9, so we'll be left with 9x squared. And 125 divided by 5 is going to be equal to 25. And now what we're left with inside the brackets here is a difference of two squares. 9x squared is a perfect square because 3x times 3x is equal to 9x squared, 
and 25 is a perfect square because 5 times 5 is equal to 25. So the same way that we had a squared minus b squared, and the factored version of that was a minus b times a plus b, we can recognize that in this case our a is going to be the square root of 9x squared, which is just 3x, and our b is going to be the square root of 25, which is 5, so we have 3x minus 5, 3x plus 5, and we can't forget about our original 5 that we factored out in the beginning. So this is essentially the same thing that we have here, except in this case our a is 3x and our b is 5. Now let's look at another special case. If we have a binomial squared, like x plus 5 squared. This is a binomial and we're squaring our binomial. You might be tempted to expand this out and use that long-winded way that we have been doing things in the past, which is to expand, multiply each of the terms by each of the terms. And while this will give you the correct answer, this can sometimes take a bit of our time. And there's actually a shortcut that you can use when you're squaring a binomial that you can use to get to the answer a lot faster. So let's actually do this the long way and see what answer we get and then see if we can recognize a pattern in that answer. So if we do this the long way, we have x times x, which is x squared, x times 5, which is 5x, we have x times 5 again, which is another 5x, and then we have 5 times 5, which is 25. Another way of writing this down is that when we have, let's say, a plus b squared, our answer is going to be a squared plus ab plus ab plus b squared. And that is exactly the same thing that we had here because our a in this case was x and our b was 5. So 5x is ab and b squared is 5 squared here, which is 25. So another way that we can simplify this formula is a squared plus 2ab because we have ab plus ab plus b squared. And this is actually going to be the exact formula that you can use to calculate the answer when you are squaring a binomial. Now let's look at an example when our leading coefficient is not equal to 1. Here we have a leading coefficient of 1. Our formula is going to be very similar, just with a slight adaptation. So let's look at the following example. 7x plus 10 squared. Now if we do this the long way, we can write down 7x plus 10 times 7x plus 10. And if we expand this the long way, we have 7x times 7x, which is equal to 49x squared. 7x times 10 is equal to 70x. 10 times 7x again is going to be 70x. And 10 times 10 is going to be equal to 100. So what we have here is basically 7 squared, which is another way of writing down 49, x squared plus 2 since we have a 70x and a 70x, we have two of these, two. And 70x is basically going to be our 7 here times our 10. So 2 times 7 times 10 times x plus 10 squared, which is the same thing as 100. So if we put this in terms of a formula, when we have a binomial in the form of ax plus b squared, 
what we're going to get is a squared times x squared plus 2abx plus b squared. And this is exactly the same thing that we have here, except in this case, we are just expressing our 7 as a, our x is remaining x, and our b is 10. So this is going to be a formula that you're going to be able to use when you are trying to expand out the square of a binomial. And this is going to allow you to get to the answer a lot faster instead of going through the long route of expanding. And what you might recognize is that since we know that expanding is the opposite of factoring, we can see that whenever we get an expression that is in this form, that is in this form here, we actually have a very simple formula for what its factored form is going to be. So when we have an expression, and let me just scroll down so we can get ourselves a little bit more space here. When we have an expression that is going to be in the format of a squared x squared plus 2abx plus b squared, we know that we can easily factor that as ax plus b squared. So let's actually look at an example where we do have an expression that is in this format. Let's look at the following example. 9x squared minus 12x plus 4. Now what you can immediately recognize to pick up an expression like this is that you're going to be looking for a perfect square at the front of the expression and at the end of the expression. So when you see an expression like this and you recognize that this here is a perfect square and that this here is a perfect square, you should immediately think to yourself that maybe you have an expression that is in this format and then you can use this very quick formula to factor it. And the way that you can validate that that's true is by recognizing that our a here is going to be the square root of 9, so our a is going to be 3, because our a squared is going to be equal to 9, so 3 squared is equal to 9. Then we have our x squared, which is just going to be our x squared, it's still represented here, and we're going to recognize that our b is equal to the square root of 4, which is 2, because our b squared has to be equal to 4. The way that we can validate whether our expression here is in this format is to look at this middle term here. And we have to double check that a times b all multiplied by 2, because remember we have 2abx, and also we have to add our x in there. So we have to validate that 2 abx is equal to negative 12x. And if we use these two numbers here, we can see that 2 times 3 times 2x is going to be equal to, well, 3 times 2 is 6, times 2 is 12, and that is equal to 12x. And since we need a negative over here, we know that one of these numbers has to be negative and one of these numbers has to be positive. So we can either have our numbers being negative 3 and 2, or we can have um, negative 2 and 3. So this expression can be written as 3x minus 2 squared, or minus 3x plus 2 squared, since one has to be positive and one has to be negative. And I will just show you that these two um, are actually the same thing, because if we give ourselves a little bit more space here, if we factor out a negative 1 here, that just becomes a negative 1 
3x minus 2 all squared. And we can write this thing as negative 1 squared and then 3x minus 2 squared. And negative 1 squared is just equal to 1. So that is the same thing as 1 times 3x minus 2 squared, which is exactly what we have here. So that's why we can give ourselves both options here. Well, let's give one more example. 25x squared minus 30x plus 9. Now again, we have an expression that is starting with a perfect square and has a perfect square at the end as well. So how are we going to validate that we can use that simplified formula to factor this expression? Well, if our 25 is our a, is our a squared, then a is equal to the square root of 25, which is 5, our b is going to be equal to the square root of 9, which is 3. And now we have to make sure that 2 abx is equal to negative 30x. And since we have x on both sides, all we actually need to make sure is that 2ab is equal to negative 30. So let's look at our two numbers here. What is 5 times 3? 5 times 3 is 15. So 2 times ab, which is 5 times 3, 2 times 15 is equal to 30. So this does work. We just know again that one of our numbers is positive and one of our numbers is negative. So we can factor this as 5x minus 3 squared or negative 5x plus 3 squared. 